morning is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 50. The next day Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the Law and the Prophets, Jesus, <coughs> Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth on the human one. So this is reading. Please remain seated for the sermon hymn, good old Methodist standard, Amazing Grace. Verses 1, 2, 3, and 6.
Well, Nathaniel hasn't even seen Jesus. He hasn't met him yet. And Jesus hasn't met Nathaniel yet either. They have not met in person. But Nathan, Nathaniel, Nathan for short, Nathan is amused and sarcastic when his brother says, Hey, come, come meet this Jesus guy. I think he's the real thing. And Nathaniel says, What good can possibly come out of Nazareth? It's kind of like someone saying to us, Well, what good could possibly come out of Shibuya Falls, United Methodist Church, or Faith United Methodist Church? Faith United Methodist Church, what good could come out of Shibuya Falls? Or, you know, come on, don't, don't be silly, be serious. And Jesus realizes that this is Nathaniel's attitude, and Jesus is kind of amused, and he laughs. And when they meet in person the next day, Jesus says to him, Oh, I see you're an Israelite, true and honest, true blue. And Nathan, Nathaniel, is like, How do you know I'm Israelite and true blue and trustworthy. And Jesus, and this is was so, preparing this sermon was uh, putting puzzles together for me. Jesus said, well, I saw you sitting under the fig tree yesterday. What? And Nathaniel was thinking, no, you, you, I didn't see you. You weren't around. How did you know I was sitting under a fig tree yesterday? And he realizes somehow this Jesus is who he says he is, and he knows Nathaniel. He feels known. He feels seen. He, it, it's, and he says to Jesus, you must be God's son. You must be the king of Israel. And then Jesus says, you haven't seen anything yet. Come and follow me. And Nathaniel does. Isn't it interesting? Nathaniel didn't even want to meet Jesus. He was already very scornful. Uh, what good could, how could this man from Nazareth, which my hunch is that um, Nathaniel, who was from Bethsaida, um, and maybe they were kind of rival towns like rival high schools can be. And you, know, you say, well, what good could come out of Nazareth? Um, Nathaniel didn't even want to meet him. And I, I wonder if he thought, how could God's son, this Jesus the Messiah that we've been waiting for, um, how could he be from Nazareth? I mean, nothing good comes out of Nazareth. Well, Jesus had a sense of humor, and he quipped right back to uh, Nathaniel, hey, Nathaniel, good to, to meet you. By the way, I know who you are, and straight up and you're um, an Israelite, you're not deceitful, you're, you're a good guy. Kind of an unlikely beginning for a relationship. So now Nathaniel is convinced and then this was another confusing part for me. It's like, well, why did Jesus mention the, the fig tree and say Nathaniel under there? Well, that convinced Nathaniel that, yes, this Jesus he must be who he says he is because he knows me. He, he saw me somehow. And then Jesus confuses me more by sharing with Nathaniel the story of Jacob from the Old Testament. And um, you know, Jacob and Esau were the sons of Isaac. And Jacob was very competitive with his brother Esau so much that he actually stole Esau's birthright from him. And when Esau realized this, um, and this is a very serious um, infraction, Jacob started running for his life. And he was running for his life for a good 30 years or more, always looking over his shoulder, wondering when his brother was going to catch up with him and probably kill him. That's what he was afraid of. Well, we know that eventually God called up with Jacob, wrestled with Jacob through the night, 
And Jacob realized, wow, I don't need to keep running anymore. God has found me, and God renamed Jacob Israel and told Jacob, now that you are Israel, your people, your descendants will become my chosen people. And that night, Jacob slept probably for the, the best sleep he had had in years and years and years. And he dreamed of a ladder reaching down with angels ascending and descending from heaven to earth where he was sleeping. Uh, they appeared to him in a dream. And he realized that this was a message of God breaking through, God coming close, as close as God could, from heaven to earth. It happened to Jacob, and Jacob realized, God is breaking through into my world, and my, my world will no longer be the same. It will be different. And Jesus tells this story to Nathan, Nathaniel, I don't know why I keep calling him Nathan, Nathaniel, because he wanted him to know, you know that story, Jacob, um, Nathaniel, from the Old Testament about Jacob and the dream and the angels ascending and descending? Well, that was a story about God breaking through into the world as closely as he possibly could. And now I am here with you, and I'm telling you that story because now God, once again, is breaking through into the world through me. And that is who I am. And Nathaniel sees that God is breaking through into his life in, through this person, Jesus. Working through this for a week Things just became clearer to me. I don't know if they're any clearer to you. I'm always preaching to myself anyway. So if you get something good or something that you can take with you from this message, wonderful. If you don't, well, I did. And that, that's a good thing because it's like, oh, cool. God breaking through. Wow, God can break through to me. And to you all. And when Nathaniel said, what good could come out of Nazareth? Well, some people, including some of us, might think of ourselves. Well, what could come from me? Or what could come out of our church family? A lot of good. All that to say, you just never know when God is going to break through and do something. And through you, through me, through us as a church family, so don't underestimate what good can come out of places that you wouldn't think any good could come from. God breaks through a lot in your life, in my life, and we need to be open to that. And as last Monday was a federal holiday, it was celebration of Martin Luther King's birthday, I just wanted to make a connection. That's why Martin's in the picture up there of um, a little bit about how God broke through and used him in ways that maybe no one could have imagined. It was, uh, the I think it was 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama, and Rosa Parks had just been arrested for not giving up her seat on the bus. And the um, black leaders in Montgomery, um, pastors, religious folks, other black people with, with power and influence got together and said, it's time. We need to come together and we need to do something, which was the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement. And they needed someone that was relatively unknown to the, um, the white leaders of Montgomery the police and the, the powerful ones, um, someone who would not be intimidated by um, the, those leaders. They needed someone to lead this movement, this boycott of the busing, uh, riding the buses in Montgomery, 
And here's this 20-something-year-old pastor who is a pastor in Montgomery who is willing to step up and say, I will lead this boycott. I, I'll do it. Which then is the beginning of the civil rights movement. And one, a quote that, that Martin Luther King made is um, about this whole this boy, bus boycott and his work with this um, movement. He said, human progress comes through the tireless effort of persons willing to be co-workers with God. Human progress comes through the tireless efforts of persons willing to be co-workers with God. Martin Luther King helped a whole generation of people see where God was breaking through from heaven into earth and how God was getting maybe a not so expected foothold on earth. He helped us remember that God is about justice and righteousness and mercy. And Martin Luther King, in raising his hand and saying, I will lead this um, protest, and later we know how even more he became involved in civil rights, revealed a sense of God's love and God's shalom and God's desire for well-being for all of God's people, not just white people, not just well-to-do people, um, not just successful people, but for all people, no matter what their color was, where everyone is welcome at God's table. So that's kind of what I was working on this week and had different breakthroughs in working on this and all seeing of the cardinals, uh, even seeing that cat hiding under my um, bird feeders and has this cute little black spot right on the side of its face. It's like, thanks God for breaking through. Amen. <laughs>